Mazda CX-5 has been around for a couple of years now. Did have a facelift about two, three years ago where they sharpened up the nose a little bit, made the grille a little bit bigger and more substantial. You can see a lot of chrome work over here and you get the nice daytime running lights and of course projection LED headlights. Items like that that were added. But, and I'm going to emphasize this, it has been around for a couple of years. But what is interesting is it still sells well and it still won its category recently at the Cast of Cosa Awards in the medium SUV category and that's important because it still is so highly rated. You've of course got your typical body cladding around the wheel arches along the bottom of the doors that you can expect from an SUV and really neat 19 inch mag wheels on this particular model because this is what Mazda are calling the carbon edition and I'll talk a lot more about that just now but I must tell you that I really think this color is so unusual, so different. Mazda called it polymetal gray. Don't know what the name means, but it doesn't matter. It just really stands out very nicely and I think is a very good looking color. I'll open the back door for you over here. And as I said, considering it is a medium SUV, you can see it's got lots of space in the rear. Carbon Edition gives you leather with suede seating, which is really nice. You've got aircon vents for the back. Good point over there. And you've got Isofix, of course, see, uh, fittings for the rear seats, for child seats, which again, nice feature. Plenty of legroom in the back seat. Seat, of course, the driver's seat is set for myself, and you can see headroom aplenty. Another interesting little feature as you come towards the back of the car over here is it's a pretty broad C pillar over here. But this little chrome trim over here may seem insubstantial, but it stood out to me. And I thought it actually makes quite a difference again on the looks of the car. You come around to the rear and you've got what's becoming quite distinctive Mazda rear tail lights with a rounded light over there and then the section into of course the rear hatch. Neat, looks good etc. You pop open the boot and on this model of course it's got the shall I call it hands-free. But also interestingly I, I find this interesting Mazda is one of the few that gives you a luggage flap that you can see really lifts up with the hatch, attaches to the hatch and gives you easy access without having to fiddle etc and gives you a boot of about 380 liters in this format of course you can tumble rear seats you can see two sections and the middle section etc so you've got all those sort of features over there as well and you've got your space saver rear seat a rear, a spare wheel over here under the boot board and as Mazda are doing these days, because again, an extra on the Carbon Edition is the upgraded Bose sound system, and there's your amplifiers, etc., for the sound system to give you upgraded sound, hidden in the spare wheel very neatly over there. Press button, close boot. And you've got to take note of the fact Sky Active G as Mazda call it gasoline or petrol there is the D version as well available in the CX-5 we all know about that you drop down you'll see obviously rear park distance control and your twin tail pipes over there now the carbon edition has been added to the range as the top model in the two liter just wait for somebody who is making a bit of noise over there it's the top model in the two litre range now in place of the individual. So it's got that two litre four cylinder petrol engine, 121 kilowatts, 213 newton meters of torque. We'll talk about that a lot more once I'm behind the driver's wheel. Starting off from the driver's seat, we're actually looking over there at the heads up display in front of me which you can see just shows speed at the moment, but it also does have a nice feature, which is your blind spot warning, which shows in your side mirrors, also shows on there. So you get a double warning just to know that there's cars before you change lanes, etc. Good one there, Mazda. Then you come down, of course, to the dashboard, and let's have a look at a few facts here. And I want to just tell you, this car is so new, it arrived with a total of 38 kilometers traveled. It's now on 396. You can see we've done 357 kilometers on this test so far. 
bit of freeway, bit of town, a good mix. So this is a fair figure to expect for any driver. And you can see 8 litres per 100 so far. I'm sure that will get better as the car ages slightly. You come across, of course, you've got lots of extra features. And this, again, I'm going to repeat, is because of the carbon edition. So you do have, of course, your cruise control over here. You've got your all your other buttons on the steering wheel over there. You get six airbags. I'm going to mention a lot. You've got, of course, lane departure warning, which you can switch off over there if you really want to. The middle one over there, uh, it does show, of course, in the center of the dash when you're busy over there and when you're on the road. So it's got that feature as well. You also get electric adjustment on both the drivers and the passenger seats. Good one. So few people give you on the passenger seat. I like that. You've got your 8-inch touchscreen over here, which has MZD Connect these days, upgraded, works very well, works with your phone, works with everything you want. Come down, of course, you've got your stop, start, your engine ignition button over there. I don't have to tell you. You've got dual zone climate control over there. I showed you vents in the back seat. You come down over here, and you've got your six-speed automatic gearbox. Normal torque converter, you've got a sport button as well avoid that's all i'll say i've said this before about the mazdas and especially the two liter ones that i find it just holds the revs too high and kind of screams at you a little bit when you put it into sport mode it's easy just avoid it simple unless you really want it of course now coming up to the dashboard overall you have a look and you know it's got the mazda now and as they keep going up market it's got the slightly soft touch feel to it it's got the carbon effect over here it's got of course stitching and you'll see even on the door panels you've got lots of stitching etc so it's certainly as Mazda keeps saying they're moving premium and it's heading in the right direction you come back to the center console over here and of course you've got the scroller for the touch screen you can just use the scroller if you want and you've got the home buttons etc full navigation on this one so good on that too Mazda I do like that that's an instant mute for the sound or for the radio if you're answering calls or doing something again a nice one and you've of course got your electric your electronic parking brake and an auto hold function as well if you want it so all the features you would expect and you've got two USBs and a 12 volt inside the center console over there wouldn't mind usb in the back seat as well mazda if you want this as a family vehicle but that's a little point i suppose i'm not going to say too much about it let's rather leave it but what i do want to discuss is that engine i mentioned the two liter four cylinder it's been around a long time it's certainly a pretty efficient engine and it's pretty good but mazda you spoiled your own party with a new cx30 and I'm going to say that because quite honestly in the move towards premium the CX-30 yes is brand new I mentioned at the beginning of this video the CX-5 is getting a bit older and I can feel the upward movement that progression from the two which unfairly to the CX-5 I'll say it honestly made me compare the two but I don't want to say more than that because if you're looking for the bigger, slightly more spacious, lot more room in the back seat in particular, well, then the CX-5 definitely comes back into it, doesn't it? And we all know it. It holds the road well. You've got Skyactiv technology on the suspension. You've got all of the, the in the engine as well. So you've got all of the Mazda features and it certainly does handle nicely for a medium SUV. But... It is lacking that little bit, I would say, an overtaking response in particular. And that's the area where probably most people will feel it the most. But it certainly is a great, relaxed, comfortable drive. The features that have been added to the Carbon Edition, I've mentioned some of them already. I'll mention a few more, like the Bose sound system, like the leather and suede upholstery, the blind spot warning, rear traffic warning, cross traffic warning, the reverse camera, etc. All those features obviously make up the carbon edition and give it that extra premium touch to it and the extra features. So what will it cost you? Well, as we're in it right now, 565,800. 
very market competitive. There are so many competitors, it would be too many to mention, but you know who they are, and you know if you're in this category, you need to check them all out. But Mazda still should be on shortlists of most people in this category. And never ever forget Mazda's three-year unlimited mileage warranty and service plan. They make such a big difference. Overall, the quality is there. Mazda, yes, you say you want to be a premium manufacturer. You're certainly, certainly moving in the right direction. You're looking for a car in this category? Check this one out. You owe it to yourself. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor, and I'll see you next time.